So this video is about a project that is, well, not nearly the sure bet that it seemed like even a month ago when I started working on it. With the announcement that Spider-Man is going to be probably leaving the MCU, this whole pitch idea I'm going to present is, well, pretty much impossible. But we're going to ignore all the industry talk and who wants what amount of money to just focus on a creative idea. So I've had this pitch since Far From Home came out, and I really did want to tell you my pitch for Spider-Man 3 in the MCU. So, full disclosure, haven't seen all of Far From Home. I've been a little bit busy over the summer and just hadn't gotten around to fully watching the movie. But most of this pitch is based upon stuff that has been spoiled for the film already. The MCU Spider-Man is pretty enjoyable, but I've seen one complaint that has been pressed since Civil War. That Peter Parker is too dependent on Tony Stark. He's not Spider-Man, he's Iron Man Jr. And while I don't necessarily agree with that, I think it's an interesting angle for the Spider-Man trilogy. So for the film I'm going to pitch, we have a few things that we 100% have to solve. This movie is going to have to transition Spider-Man from being a high school kid and protege whose villains are directly tied to Tony Stark to being his own man, which is where I think that Far From Home was trying to go with. We also have to address the major cliffhanger at the end of Far From Home. Peter has been outed as Spider-Man. Each of these problems really require their own movie to work with, but I think I found the solution to this. For my version of Spider-Man 3, I think that we need to have at least one story where the main threat is tied to Tony Stark. And to do that, we need to bring somebody out of retirement. Somebody who's expressed interest in returning to Marvel. A former Iron Man villain who people would be interested in seeing returning. Yep, my pitch for Spider-Man 3, Home is Where Your Heart Is, or whatever they're going to call it, is that the classic Spider-Man villain is created by... Justin Hammer. Sam Rockwell has been talking frequently about returning to the MCU, and he's really the only Iron Man villain that wasn't blown up in their own Iron Man suit. So, the movie starts after 13 years, Hammer has been released on good behavior. Hammer is living in a world where not only Tony Stark is recognized as the man who saved the universe, but he has another wall-crawling protege swinging around New York City. Why wouldn't he want to destroy another part of Stark's legacy? So, we are also living in a universe where people consider Spider-Man to be a menace to society. So, why don't we have Justin Hammer create a new villain to impersonate Spidey in order to cause even more distrust in Peter Parker? Yep. This film is going to involve Justin Hammer creating the classic Spider-Man villain, the Chameleon. I feel like he's big enough to be recognizable without being so big that he can be tied to Hammer without upsetting more hardcore fans that both Vulture and Mysterio are so closely associated with Tony Stark. So I'm not going to lay out the whole movie here, but the idea is pretty simple. About six months after Far From Home, Peter's life has changed dramatically. He's going to be homeschooled by Aunt May, he's going to graduate from high school by the end of the movie, Mostly because I feel like this trilogy should cover Peter's high school career and any future trilogy should cover college and after college life. And he's pretty much either sleeping, doing classes, or doing Spider-Man stuff under the cover of night. People still think that Peter is Spider-Man, but Peter wants to protect May and his friends, so he avoids trying to be in the spotlight. People also think that Spider-Man tried to kill Mysterio and is being a dangerous villain, so when the public starts seeing Spider-Man running around in broad daylight, people, including Peter Parker, are confused as hell. This Spider-Man keeps doing good things and helping people, turning public interest around for Spider-Man. So Peter says, fine, I'll let him be Spider-Man and just keep my head down until everything blows over. Later on in the movie, the new Spider-Man would turn, start committing crimes against the city, stealing from small businesses, and generally being an asshole. This is going to drive a wedge between May and Peter. She's encouraging him to go out and stop the imposter Spider-Man, but he keeps saying that all the Spider-Man has done is hurt him. Everything that the powers have given him, they've seemingly taken away even more. He's lost his privacy, his contact with friends, his freedom, Mr. Stark, and he lost Ben. Yes, this is finally when we acknowledge Uncle Ben and Spider-Man's origin. Not to get back into the politics of studios, but I feel like this movie is going to have to involve a little bit more Ben if we can't mention Tony Stark anymore. I feel that, like Spectacular Spider-Man, this is a good time we can start using the origin as a justification for Peter to not take action. And it gives us a moment where Peter can finally snap and let everything out to May. Think that scene in Spider-Man 2. We didn't need to have the origin in Ben in the first movie, but two movies in, I think we can get away with it. So yeah, big emotional moment between Peter and May, but we need to have our ending. How are we going to solve Peter's identity? Well, there was another post credit scene that seemed pretty interesting, about how Nick Fury and Maria Hill have been scrolls for a while, and I think that you can see where I'm going with this. We have one of the scrolls, maybe Talos or something, come and visit Peter Parker, and Peter needs to come up with a big plan involving everyone, including MJ, Ned, Flash, Happy, Pepper, and May. Big Spider-Family moment here. 
This scene would start with Peter Parker going to Hammer Tech, who've been benefiting from all this by selling new Spider Slayers, drones designed to catch Spider-Man. Yes, I know Spider Slayers are a thing in the comics by Alistair Smythe, but I think we can give them to Hammer and still have Smythe make a cameo. It's not a big deal. Justin Hammer is having a press conference, think kind of the Stark Expo from Iron Man 2 action sequences, where he's attacked by the imposter Spider-Man. Peter and Spider-Man are in a room together with a bunch of cameras. That's the thing with this final battle. We need as many people filming it so that way it definitively shows that Peter isn't Spider-Man in the eyes of the public. Imposter Spidey attacks, Peter tries to grab him to save Hammer, gets knocked out by Imposter Spider-Man, then the real Spidey swings in and starts fighting Chameleon, getting people out of the building. Eventually the fake Spider-Man turns into a more classical chameleon suit, Hammer Tech's new buildings burns down, and we have a little exchange between Hammer and Spidey, where Hammer thanks for saving him, but he still calls him Iron Boy Jr. or something like that. Give a little moment to set up Hammer as maybe a recurring side character. Trust me, we'll give him a new purpose in a post credit scene. Don't yell at me in the comments about this. Now Peter has been cleared of being Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is mostly seen as a hero. Maybe keep J. Jonah Jameson around to keep calling him a menace, but we can balance that out a little bit. But Peter, during all of this, has gotten to the point where he's done with high school. We get a moment with Ned and MJ and Flash where they're all at the high school and Peter walks in with his diploma, graduating a year earlier than them. He tells him he's going to take a gap year so he can go to college with his friends and still be Spider-Man. And that's my idea for Spider-Man Home Run. Oh, post credits. I think we should have someone buy out Hammer Tech and start working with Justin Hammer to create new villains for Spider-Man going forward. And that person is... Norman Osborn. Yeah, Norman Osborn is going to be the big overarching villain in the college trilogy for MCU Spider-Man. I feel like he is definitely the big Spider-Man villain that should be creating new villains to eventually build maybe a Sinister Six movie. And yeah, that's my idea. So, uh, I don't know how to end this. Bye.